so happy we alive. Here we are in uh, Washington, D.C., home of the vast bureaucracy populated by half vast people that make decisions here and have a collective reality that bears little resemblance to what happens out in the hustings. I'm Dr. Todd McAria from California, from Berkeley, California, where we have a different country out there since Health and Safety Code 11362.5 became law back in 1996. Since that time, it's a different country and we have a different set of problems. Now we have to look to uh, law enforcement and government for appropriate implementation and compliance. It's very much like going to the next corridor up in the Nintendo game of life. Previously there were uh, ignorant people saying things about why it, it shouldn't be passed. Part of the bureaucracy back here, part of the, the common, the central, <laughs> the common right. Uh, uh, December 30th, uh, 1996, uh, Barry McCaffrey and his fellow Coveneers uh, got in front of uh, national TV to whine and to uh, threaten California physicians for implementing their new law that they passed in defiance of uh, federal policies. <clears throat> Notwithstanding significant effort by politicians within the state, plus uh, Darren McCaffrey's coming out and uh, Everett Coops <clears throat> cutting a uh, anti-215, uh, Proposition 215 videotape for the California Medical Association, um, opposition by both senators, it passed. It passed by 56%. Uh, and you might think that, um, well, the law passed and um, <clears throat> our government is going to get to work busy and uh, implementing it and complying with it. Wrong. Since that time, it's been a study in uncovering the pathologic uh, symbiotic relationships within agencies and uh, different ways of uh, evading the law different techniques, uh, home to a fine art that I'm sure you folks out there know about log rolling, which is, uh, I'll agree not to talk about this embarrassing topic if, if you agree to it. <laughs> no, go right ahead. Well, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is also the legal world. The thing that I just discovered, this total disconnect between law, medicine, and science. Uh, it's a law, the law world is, um, Stipulated uh, agreements, for example, the sky is not blue, but it's green. Will you stipulate to that? You will for the purposes of this uh, case. <laughs> yes, I'll stipulate to that. Proceed. And this type of um, logical, if, if you accept the premises, uh, thinking is part of what has gotten into this problem and uh, continues to facilitate and uh, prolong it very much like the way um, women's suffrage was uh, denied then and also uh, slavery was prolonged and also uh, I, I'm sure that you probably remember uh, that you couldn't get uh, reproductive information until the uh, mid-60s because all of this information was forbidden by law. And so it really brings into question of the individual and society and the question of just who do you think you are. In California, it's been my pleasure to provide written letters of recommendation and approval for over 3,500 patients. And one of the most frequent reactions is to express relief and freedom from the stigma of criminality. And I really didn't understand how this bears upon otherwise law-abiding citizens' um, mentalities and worlds. The fear of arrest, of uh, forfeiture of uh, assets, of destruction of the family. You know, it's kind of like the uh, Waco, Texas, uh, we're here to protect the children 
kind of rationalization that has been most harmful with um, different uh, criminal justice entities uh, now practicing, pretending they're uh, armed ph uh, psychopharmacologists, totally ignorant, and just by a quirk of fate, they got handed these decisions that would be ordinarily handled by physicians. Well, physicians' uh, role in uh, drug policy really came to an end as part of alcohol prohibition. It started out um, with the Harrison Narcotics Act in 1914, and um, in 1919, alcohol prohibition went into effect. In 1922, the prohibition commissioner from the New York district uh, articulated the policy that was beyond the good faith practice of medicine to maintain the narcotics addict uh, outside an institution. This led to the shutdown of many narcotics clinics that were treating opiate dependent uh, people that started on their habits uh, in the Civil War, which coincided with the introduction of the hypodermic syringe in 1855, so uh, the Civil War in the United States uh, caused the Civil War within people struggling to be free of the, uh, the opiates after treating their war wounds. And up until the 20s, they were maintained in different kinds of clinics and um, medication dispensed by physicians. Well, all of these got shut down, and many physicians went to jail. And um, somehow, health policy got shifted from doctors to lawyers and politicians, and has ended up with the current problem of who's in charge of drug policy? Not the Surgeon General, but the Attorney General. And with this kind of uh, Waco mentality incompetence, <clears throat> and vindictiveness because the premise is that somebody is suffering from moral defect by use of these designated uh, medicines. They then deserve the full impact of the criminal justice system to somehow deal with these miscreants instead of uh, recognizing that these are people trying to self-medicate and relieve pain and suffering. Cannabis used to be a, a cure for opiate dependence back in the 19th century. And so much was more known about cannabis by physicians a hundred years ago as compared with today. Right now they're suffering from this um, vacuum of um, proper medical information because of the process of um, being centered in the present and believing that what is available right now is the most legitimate information, big mistake. Because they fail to uh, adequately review the uh, medical and the uh, pharmacologic and the pharmaceutical industry literature from prior to 1938 from whence cannabis was illegitimately removed. Now, <clears throat> Alcohol prohibition came to an end in 1933, in the middle of the Deep Depression as one of FDR's, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's uh, policy for economic and social policy reform. So a repeal took place in 1933 when <clears throat> the uh, Democrats took over after the crash of 29 and everybody was out of work. And, including the revenue agents who are now out on the street having to um, stand in bread lines or sell apples on the street corners. Well, Harry J. Anslinger, who was then the head of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, waged a campaign to demonize marijuana, which ended up with a successful combination with the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. This uh, whole campaign was based upon a pack of lies and racism because, after all, who was it that